Buongiorno, buonasera, benvenuti amici. Welcome my friends and welcome to my channel, Fountain Pen Therapy. I hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, I take a lot of pride in doing those, uh, those videos. It's a lot, a lot of fun, I got to tell you. Uh, and I'm enjoying this. My channel is doing very well, by the way. Thank you very much, my subscribers. Uh, looks like they're increasing on a daily basis. The views are there. Um, you know, uh, I, I'm not doing this for any other reason other than to, to, to share in my joy and my passion. And for those of you who are enjoying them, all the better. Uh, I hope you're enjoying your collection. Uh, it's, as I say, fountain pen therapy. And it's, uh, it takes away the stress and it gives us something, something to look forward to. There you go. Um, today, we're going to be reviewing the Gioia Partenopa or Partenope, excuse me, the Avorio model, the ivory model, which I think is just a fabulous pen. Here it is. Uh, I mean, I, I'm really, really happy and uh, I take great joy in saying that I chose the right color. Uh, there was various uh, different models that I could have chosen in terms of the color and this ivory color is just fabulous. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a modern classical silhouette but at the same time it's got some very very interesting characteristics joya i'm glad that joya has, has decided to market its pens because for you know it's been around for like 20 years and it was really more of a commissioned uh, outfit you know it, it would be commissioned by other pen manufacturers to to, to manufacture pens i'm glad it decided to to go off on its own and start uh, you know, manufacturing its own pens because the pens there they come up they have come up with in the last several months are just really really interesting. Uh, I've been able to purchase and been lucky enough to purchase two, and I hope to purchase more. Uh, so I, I'm hoping that you will enjoy them. Um, I think there it's it's a Neapolitan genius at its best. Um, I'm very proud of what they're doing. I'm very proud of my heritage. And I'm proud that these artisans are are finally um, producing some fine writing instruments that I hope you will uh, you will share and uh, that you can go out and purchase if you can afford it. Uh, if not, enjoy my videos and I can you know partake at least in, in in sharing it with you. So there you have it. What I propose is that we'll do a we'll do a close up review now. And a, a, you know, end with a writing sample. So stay tuned, and I'll be right back. So welcome, uh, welcome back. I hope you uh, you enjoyed that short introduction. Um, here is the pen. Um, I'm going to do a quick unboxing. It came into it came in this uh, in this. Um, packaging. I've seen alternative packaging for this pen, uh, but this is the one that I got. Um, take out that uh, cardboard sleeve. There's a nice magnetic snap uh, box with the Joya writing emotion. That's their um, intellectual property. That's their brand. And here's the pen. Isn't that fabulous? Uh, I just, I got to tell you, um, I was given a choice, and I needed to choose one of the Partenobe models. There was a, a grayer one. There was a one that kind of a reddish, purplish mix, which I really liked. But this ivory Avorio, I just it just attracted my attention, and I said, I can't see how I can pass this one with the rose gold trimmings as well. As you can see, it offers a rollerball option. Uh, and the fountain pen option. You lift, um, you lift that outside. You've got your uh, your uh, little booklet, which give you, giving you information about the uh, about the pen and uh, some of the other models uh, and how to fill it, etc. Along with the international warranty. That's Joy Up, fully made in Italy. Just a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous pen. So let's let's remove that. First thing, well, like, actually, why don't we review it first, and we can deal with the um, with the roller ball later. So let's just um, take a look at or a closer look at this pen. If, 
and um, and its characteristics. Okay, that make it, in my opinion, um, very very unique. First thing you've got to note is the this very unique clip, which is uh, Joya's um, way of. Uh, I've I've seen that clip also in the Joya area. Okay, so that first of all, the, the, all of the trimmings are in rose gold. That's their color. Okay, uh, they the the fountain pens come in either extra fine, fine, medium, or 1.1 millimeter stub. As I mentioned, they have a rollerball accessory or a cartridge refill or an international or a converter refill. Um, the clip is made out of um, an ancient goldsmith uh, goldsmith's process called lost wax technique. Um, and the cap itself, and it may be no, it may not be as obvious, uh, but it 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 shows the Gulf of Naples. <laughs> I mean, you know, being Napolitan, this this just it, it, talk about writing emotions. Well, it's it's evoking a lot of emotions in me. I can tell you. While we we're in the close up, take a look at this ivory resin. Isn't that fabulous? I mean, it just it just gives me the shivers. I look maybe it's because I'm just so passionate about these pens. I I I just enjoy it, and of course the made in Italy flag. I mean, <laughs> being Italian, that, that you know it's like the the cherry on top of the of the cake. You know, it's um, Joya pen. I'm just so glad they just got out of the, you know, you know, they've been around since 2014. They've been there for like 20 years, but they were basically a commission, um, sort of an outfit where they would be commissioned to produce pens for others. They finally got out of the woodwork and they started, you know, they have their own brand now and they're doing well. They some have some wonderful, wonderful pens that I hope to acquire soon, and uh, we can review them together. The you know the finial is uh, obtained with a 3D technique. Uh, it's enameled. Um, I like you know I like this great touch, and I tell you why. Well, if we remove the cap, you know, if I had this I white ivory at the tip here, every time I would dip that in ink, I would be very reluctant because eventually. I've got a feeling that this resin will get stained. And I know there's another pen out there, a Laban, if I'm not mistaken, that's been criticized because every time, you know, you, you ink the pen, it gets darker and darker and the stains appear. But with this gray enameled uh, look, you don't have that problem. You don't have that problem. So I think it's a great touch. You, you can see the... Um, the nib there, um, Joya 1.1. Isn't that a gorgeous nib? Just absolutely gorgeous. Um, you do see that it has some transparency, the, um, the ivory uh, resin. Um, you can take a look in there. I think it's, uh, you know, it, it does what it needs to do. You see the capping is very good so that the pen remains wet. Uh, I gotta tell you, I'm just so excited to own this pen. Mm -hmm. uh, and while we're there, we can see that by removing, you know, you could remove this and then just insert the whole thing uh, in the pen. So let's put that aside for now. You can see that all I need to do is really insert. And there you have it. Okay, it's it's a rollerball. So... Um, Got to tell you, <laughs> it's a winner. To me, it's a winner. It's one of the best design pens that I own. Uh, and this white ivory, I just don't regret getting it. I got to tell you, I, I had some hesitation and wanted to choose perhaps another color, but I'm, I'm so glad I got the white. I'm really, really happy with it. And um, that's, that's the outer shell, the inner shell. That's the nib. Um, and I think the next step is for us to to do a writing sample. Now, just give me a second. I'm going to 
um, show you the ink that I will be using. Sorry about that. I just uh, left the ink on the other desk. I apologize. Um, here's the ink we wa I wanted to use today. This is a pen BBS ink, number 261. It's a glitter. It's got a grayish glitter, so you've got to shake that up. And depending on, you know, on the paper, you, you, you will be able to see it. I'm hoping that this, that the, the ink will come across in a grayish, with this grayish tint that resembles uh, somewhat the, the enamel. That's, that's one of the reasons why I chose this pen BBS ink. Let me just put the pen aside. I can show you my swatch book. Um, and um, when I swatched it on Tomo River, on this Tomo River journal, what the ink is supposed to look like. Uh, that's 281. Where's my 261? I believe it's the next page. Could it be? No. Uh, maybe the earlier page. There it is. That's it. Pen BBS 261. I bought that in 2020. Isn't that a fabulous ink? I'm just hoping that the pen will will show this ink. I think it's a very nice... See, you know, so this, these Chinese inks, difficult to get, by the way, the pen BBS. You've got to go through loops. Maybe one, one day I will, do a, um, I will do a review of all my inks from pen BBS. I bought a bunch of them because I realized it would be so difficult to get them. And you've got to go through a broker uh, because they don't have a site unless things have changed. And maybe uh, AliExpress now sells them. I, I would have to check who, what the situation is recently. But uh, I, I think these inks are fabulous. Uh, look at them. Look at this one. Burning white um, barn i i i mean just a gorgeous uh you know uh where is it sorry you can't see it there it is it's the the bottom one look at that just it's just fabulous anyway so those that's the ink okay i'm back yeah i think i chose the wrong ink <laughs> but just because that that shimmer in that ink is very very thick and i've got a feeling that it's interfering with the with the twines, and I have not played with this um, this um, nib, uh, but essentially, let's see let's see what it gives. It's actually not as bad as I would have thought. I needed to kickstart it a little bit just because it's been sitting upside down for a while, so it's not the pen's fault. So this is Joya Pen. It's the Parte Nope Ivory. The the nib is a Joya Joo one point one stub. Very nice. I think I need to. I'm going to have to give it a little sanding. It's a little. I I think you can hear it. So. A lot of feedback. Very rigid, by the way. It, there's no flex at all. Well, I don't want to spring it. There is some line variation. I don't know if you could see that. Um, okay, it's a little thick there, and then it's thin. But there is quite a bit of feedback. But can you see the ink? Look at that. How it's coming down really gray, and it's sparkly. And... You know, I'm going to wash that out right away. I don't want to ruin this pen with that ink, but it's it's <laughs> you know it's a joy to to at least see see it it's it's working. You know, so the ink is the pen BBS two sixty one. They don't give it uh, everything is numbered with their inks. So they don't give it well. Sometimes you have a name, but this one doesn't appear to have one. So. There it is. And you see, as the ink dries, it becomes a, a kind of a silver, silver color, which is a, a nice touch. But it's not an ink that I would recommend that you use on a daily basis, frankly. But, you know, for some people who have this great calligraphy handwriting, and um, 
to do your, your, you know, I don't know, birthday invitations or, you know, write a romantic letter to your loved one uh, or, or, you know, that sort of thing. You could use, if you want to use a silver, silver ink or a silver sparkling ink, well, this is it. So it, it does serve a purpose. Now, in terms of the rating, i got to tell you, I'm not happy with this nib. I'm really not. But the pen itself, look, I, I'm very enthusiastic about it, so I'm going to give it a 9.9. Uh, I don't think that um, the pen itself uh, can be given anything less than that. In terms of the, the nib, well, even with that ink, I think there's a bit too much feedback. I need to adjust it quite a bit. So I, I'm going to give it a disappointing 8.8. .8. I just don't like this nib right now. I don't like the way it writes. Is it the ink? Is it not the ink? I'm going to blame the nib for now. Uh, and in a future episode, if, um, if it's not the case, I'll come back and correct it. But for the time being, I don't like this nib. I'm, I'm going to have to work on it. In terms of value, um, it runs about three hundred dollars Canadian when all is depending on the uh, depending on the uh, exchange rate. And these days, the euro is um, is uh, almost more than one point five vis-a-vis the Canadian. So it's about three hundred dollars Canadian, and then you get taxes and you got uh, duties and fees and all the rest of it. But it's about three hundred dollars. So that's it. That's my Partenope. Um, Partenope Gioia, and I wish that nib was much nicer. Maybe I'll wash it out, and if I have time, I'll come back with a uh, wetter ink and see if it makes a difference. And if it does, I'll just add it to this um, to the end of this video. Okay, I, I'm back. I promised you that I would um, refill this pen um, and reevaluate the nib because. I was a little bit surprised at uh, the first first shot I got at trying this nib. And, you know, sometimes it, it goes to show you you've got to be very careful with some inks because some inks are very dry uh, and they could mislead you into tuning a nib when the nib really needs no tuning. And I believe that this is the case with this nib. So I'm going to demonstrate to you I've gone back and replaced the ink with a Konpeki Irushutsu pilot ink here and here's the result night and day ladies and gentlemen night and day Partenope ivory is there a little feedback? Yes, but it's good feedback. It's not scratchy. And, you know, now we're, now we're talking. This nib is very, very nice. Quite the contrary. So, with the ink being the Konpeki, I, I have to reevaluate this 8.8 .8 that I gave it. <laughs> But I promised I would do it, so I'm back, and I'm going to rectify this. And this nib now is a 9.5. With it's got this very interesting feedback. Some people don't like it; they want it buttery smooth. I like it because it kind of gives you it's feedback. Okay, it it tells you you're there. It tells you it's writing, but I mean it's it's smooth, very smooth, constant. No, no hard start. So you know what? 9.5. So there you go. Rectified the situation. I apologize earlier, but it just goes to show you sometimes you got to choose the right ink. And if you don't, if you choose a dry ink, then you've got to expect to get a different result. This, this, I'm not going to touch this nib. I'm not going to touch it. Thank you very much. See you next time.